This is the fifth time I've tried to record this video. It was supposed to be out over a week ago. But every time I just couldn't do it. The script was off, the storytelling sucked, and I was just blabbing at the camera. But more importantly, like, something just felt off. My plan was to do a video on authenticity. What it is, how you can develop it, you know, why it's important. Yet, I just had this visceral feeling that something was wrong. Ironically, it was exactly what I was about to warn against. I was being inauthentic. You see, the words on the page weren't mine. They were the thoughts and the ideas of someone else. I couldn't really say I'd solved the problem yet. And this is why I think you should watch this video. If you're feeling an overwhelming sense of unease, if you struggle each day just to get going with what you should do, if you have a sense that something's just a bit off, missing some meaning, then I think this video might be for you. So let's rewind a few years. I really lament the fact that for much of my 20s, I made many important decisions for reasons other than my own. The outcome of which left me feeling rather shallow, alone, and without a sense of meaning. In my previous career, I did medical device sales, and it's a great career, and I'd encourage anybody who's interested in it to investigate, but it just wasn't for me. Deep down, I always knew that I wanted to be a doctor, and I was interested in entrepreneurship. These were really the only two things that I could see myself doing, but I didn't, did I? I worked for other people instead of myself. I took jobs I thought I should do, and I didn't pursue medicine until I'd hit rock bottom. <laughs> yeah, I'd love that job, I'd say, but deep down, I knew I didn't give a shit, and you know what the outcome was? Every day was a fucking struggle. Every day, I felt like Sisyphus just pushing that goddamn boulder up the hill. I did the best I could, I never really hit a stride. How could I, when literally all of my energy was just getting me out of bed to face the day? And I watched guys that I started with get promoted before me. Everything just seemed so, so effortless for them. They made more money, better networks, and they were rewarded handsomely. All the while, I found myself asking, what the hell was wrong with me? Well, I know now, I was being inauthentic. I was cladded in character armor, so I didn't have to risk injury to my true, authentic self. So, where does this come from and what on earth can we do about it? Well, the 20th century pediatrician and psychoanalyst, Donald Winnicott, he believed in a concept called the true self and the false self. The true self describes our authentic self. It's that innate sense of self that develops in a healthy individual. His belief was that the true self was formed through early childhood experiences and interactions with caregivers. In contrast to the true self, the false self is a protective and adaptive facade that individuals develop as a response to the demands and expectations of their environment particularly in early relationships. So it's a social persona that masks our true self's vulnerability. And whilst it might be necessary for survival, it certainly hinders self-expression. Another great thinker of the 20th century, Martin Heidegger, he suggested that most people adopt character armor by the way of becoming Das Mann. Literally speaking, Das Mann translates to the they or the one, and it refers to the anonymous everyday conformance and collective mode of existence that characterizes most people's lives in modern society. Essentially, Das Mann represents the societal norms, values, and expectations that individuals conform to without critical examination. Thus, when we adopt character armor, we exist inauthentically as the fallen, essentially characterized by a preoccupation with what others think and expect of us. Ultimately, this confirmation will lead to a sense of alienation and disconnection from one's true self. By becoming absorbed in the collective, we lose sight of our individuality and personal values. And I'd certainly done this. Now, to combat it, we need to become aware of our authentic self. And an approach that I used both accidentally and more consciously over the last couple of years is something I learned from Jordan Peters. And essentially it's this idea of paying attention to how we respond internally to the things we think and do and say. Given he can say this better than I can, I'll let the man himself explain it to you. My sense has been that you can tell when you're saying something that's not authentic by feeling out whether or not it makes you weak or strong. Watch for two weeks and see. Make a rule that if you start to say something and it makes you feel weak, it's like I've just stepped off the solid ground and onto something that, that doesn't support me well, and it, it feels like a self-betrayal. So that's existential inauthenticity. You can feel it right away. And then the rule is, shut up if that happens. Stop talking. And then feel around 
and see if you can find some words that you can say in that situation that don't produce that sensation. Do you know what the best day of my career was? The day I told my boss about my intention to study medicine. I'd been offered an interview, but I was, I was by no means in yet. I took the risk and I told her my intention. I could no longer go back, I'd committed. And it felt bloody great. <laughs> For the first time I'd been really honest. And in that moment I decided that regardless of the outcome, I would only pursue things that resonated with me. My own values, my sense of being. And I would stop making decisions for other people's reasons on what I should do. Now I'm by no means perfect, and I've failed so many times at this since. But in each domain of life it gets that little bit easier. And it's like, it's fucking scary. Because in choosing to live authentically, we open up our innate self the kernel of what makes us us. We open that up to criticism. It becomes vulnerable, but at the same time, it's so remarkably freeing. Suddenly, your brain power is available to work on the things that are intrinsically rewarding to you. I don't struggle to get out of bed anymore. I don't struggle to motivate myself like I used to. And I perform so much better, all because what I do now aligns with what I value and I don't hide that from others. What do you think? Does this fit with your experience? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this, please consider sending it on to someone who you think might enjoy it. I'd love it if you would like and subscribe. We are just a small channel for now, but we grow one click at a time. So thank you. Peace.